Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw. Oh wow! Try it again. Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw that time depends upon how fast you travel. The faster you travel, the slower time progresses, and eventually, when you can travel at the speed of light, time essentially will stop, and all of history will unfold itself in a mere instant in your time frame. But we also realize that time depends on gravity. And we realize that depending upon where we are, where gravity is different, time will progress differently. At first, the differences are very minute. But as gravity becomes stronger and stronger, the time difference becomes enormous. So let's take a look. Notice if we're in, in space, floating around in our spacesuit, nowhere near any planets or moons or asteroids or anything like that where there would be any sort of gravity, well, time is your standard time. A second is a second. But when we stand on the surface of the Earth, when we're under the gravitational force and influence of the Earth's gravity, well, time will run slower by 605 microseconds per day. That's 0 0.000605 seconds per day. A little bit less than a millisecond. So you might say that, well, that's not very much, and does it really even matter? And, well, in some cases it will, and we'll see that in the future. But there's a slight difference between the time as it passes on the Earth's surface versus when you're floating in space. It actually travels, time actually progresses a little slower. If we then had the right spacesuit and the right asbestos suit on, if we stood on the surface of the sun, which of course we know is completely impossible, but if we could, you'd find that time runs even slower than when you're standing on the surface of the Earth. At that point, the time will slow down by 0.18 seconds per day, about two tenths of a second per day. Again, you might say that's not very much and can't even be measured, but yes, it would be able to be measured if you could stand on the surface of the sun. Well, let's go to another place in the universe called the White Dwarf. Most stars in the universe, when they run past their normal progression of their life cycle, they will turn into a White Dwarf. Our Sun is no different. In about 5 billion years or so, our Sun will have turned itself into White Dwarf. The core of the star, the core of the Sun, will have collapsed into an object about the same size of the Earth. And obviously, I did not draw these things to scale. But if you stand on the surface of a white dwarf, the gravitational attraction is so powerful, so strong there, that time will run slower by as much as 30 seconds per day, a half a minute per day. Again, you might say, well, that's not that much of a difference, although a half a minute, well, it turns out that if you're under the enormous gravitational force of a white dwarf, time does not run the same as it does on the Earth's surface or if you're floating around in space. So there's something going on with space that when you're nearby a very powerful gravitational force, an object that causes that force, such as a white dwarf, time does run at a different, a different speed or progresses at a different rate. And then if we could stand on a neutron star. Now a neutron star is a star that, that develops at the end of a life cycle of a very, very big star. Our sun will never turn into a neutron star, but very big stars when they start out with a very massive amount of mass in the beginning, when they run to their end cycle, they're very likely to turn into a neutron star. Now, neutron stars are so compact that the enormous star will have collapsed into something that's only 12 miles across, about 20 kilometers across. If you were able to stand on the surface of that neutron star, time would slow down by six hours per day. So a day would take a, well, let's see here, let's put that in perspective. When 24 hours pass by on the Earth's surface, at the same time, only 18 hours will have passed at the surface of a white dwarf. And then there's the ultimate place where time eventually will stop. That place is a black hole. At the event horizon, that's the point around or the region around the black hole where you need to travel at the speed of light just to get away from it. If you don't, gravity will simply pull you in. And if you're at the event horizon of a black hole, time will actually stop. Time will not progress. The gravitational force is so enormous at that location that time simply stops. Now this is interesting because think about it. 
let's say that you're on your way to a black hole and as you get closer and closer obviously at some point the gravitational force of the black hole will be so enormous that if you decided that you didn't want to go to the black hole and you turned your spaceship around and you try to fly away from it the powerful gravitational force would be too much for your for the engines of your spacecraft and the spacecraft would simply be pulled towards a black hole as you're being pulled to the black hole, remember, the rest of the universe will simply progress at the same time rate, which essentially, unless you're on a neutron star or white dwarf, for all of space, essentially will just continue at nearly the same time as you would see when you're in space like that. So stars would be born and stars would die, planets would come and go, things would erupt, things would disappear, things would be born. So things that would take millions and billions of years would appear to just take just a few moments in the time frame that you're at. The rest of the universe would simply continue on in this normal time. Time here would simply slow down. So as you're getting closer and closer to the event horizon, of course you'd have to withstand those enormous gravitational forces, but if you could, well, your time would slow down tremendously while the rest of the universe would just continue. And life on Earth would just continue, millions of years would pass in the blink of an eye, if you're near a black hole. And as you get closer and closer, the universe would appear to just be speeding up and speeding up until it becomes like this wild motion of things in the universe as time not only progresses when time first you stand still. And by the time that you get to the event horizon, the rest of the universe would just pass by in the blink of an eye while time for you would be eternal. So that's a very interesting aspect of time. Time is relative due to speed, as we saw in the previous video, and also due to gravity. And it's amazing what will happen if you ever, ever were able to reach the event horizon of a black hole. So do you ever get stuck into a black hole then? So that's the interesting part. So that's what people say, well, if time essentially stops as you go to the event horizon of a black hole, well, to a person on Earth looking at you going into the event horizon, Time would just simply progress. And so according to the person observing, we assume that the person would simply disappear in the black hole. But for the person at the black hole, that time will stop. And so relative to this person, time will actually come to a complete stop. So that's the assumption. How do we know that? Well, because we know that material falls into a black hole, so it does progress, and black holes tend to grow in size as they gobble up more and more mass. So we know that material falls into a black hole. Uh, we can see black holes that have accumulated material over time, and so therefore we know that must happen. But we also know that time comes to a stop when you're at the event horizon, so it seems to be kind of contradictory in that respect. So once they're in there, we definitely can't see it. A black hole, it's called a black hole because no messages, no electromagnetic radiation, nothing will actually leave a black hole. Once you're inside the event horizon, you're stuck there forever. However, anything nearby a black hole will be influenced by the mass of the black hole. So we can actually estimate and calculate the mass of a black hole by what happens around it. And that is unmistakable. We have black holes that contain the mass of billions of stars. So they're there, we can measure them, we can actually see them indirectly. If we see them, then shouldn't they have not gone in because time slows down so much? See, that's the thing, right? For an object falling into a black hole, time will stop, but yet they will go into a black hole. So yeah, that is definitely kind of a contradiction when you think about it. We'll have to find a good answer for that one.